filmmaker to call. Mm. Pitch a couple of ideas. And then kind of sheepishly on the way back from lunch, I said, you know, I kind of would like to see a documentary about my summer camp. And and as she told me later during one of our Q and A's for Crip Camp, she kind of did an eye roll inside her head. Like everybody thinks their summer camp is special. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. <laughs> But really kind of what sunk it or sealed the deal for us was showing her a Facebook page of all these incredible photographs of teenagers with disabilities in the early 70s having a great freaking time. <laughs> and, also, and so she came back to me and said, you know, yes, I'd like to do this, but I want us to direct and produce together. And I, I mean, I was kind of blown away that she did that or asked me, and I obviously I said yes. But we forged um, a collaboration that was rather extraordinary, really building upon our strengths and our trust and our commitment and passion to our film. Mm -hmm. And it is really a model that I'm seeing play out again with a film that Sarah and I are executive producers on called Fire Through Dry Grass, mm -hmm. which is an extraordinary story about a bunch of guys and, and gals living in Kohler Rehab Hospital on Roosevelt Island, mm -hmm. and how when COVID hit, the mayor said, we're gonna open up Kohler. They've only already been living there, and how um, they were starting to move COVID patients in with them. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are going out in the community. They have a group called the reality poets and they're talking to kids in school and all of a sudden now they're in lockdown and one of them dies of COVID because of this. Mm -hmm. But they started filming. They started filming with their phones and they started, then they got a GoPro and they got connected with some people uh, and were and have been still working with a documentary filmmaker who lived in Roosevelt Island for a long time. The power of this collaboration in which you can work together with someone from the inside and somebody from the outside is really, really powerful. If everyone has agency and respect mm -hmm. and the ability to make mistakes and change your mind. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is certainly what you know my experience was on Crip Camp. Um, so I want to just talk a little bit more, and I think I'm going over my my time at their, their station break. Okay, I'll be right with you. <laughs> um, so, out of, um, I think this is a fairly good story. So in 2016, the International Documentary Association was having their biannual conference. And it was all about inclusion. And I'm reading about this online. There's nothing about disability. And so I got one of the forums online as the D board, and I said, how can you be talking about a, diversity or inclusion without people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And um, I got a response back from the um, IDA saying, no, you're right. You're right. And that, um, and it was, um, so, she, Marjan. Marjan, thank you. Her last name gets a bit. Um, and, you know, Marjan really stepped up on that. Mm -hmm. And part of her keynote on the first day was to acknowledge that. Uh, after that moment, um, I worked with them. Uh, we wound up having a uh, panel on which I named the Ramp Less Traveled <laughs> with, for filmmakers with disabilities, with Jen Brea, with Jason DeSolvan, with Dale Muhammad, all these really incredible folks. And, and after that, we had um, a convening in the next room. And I heard that this is sometimes how a lot of organizations start, like ADOC or Brown Girls Doc Mafia. Um, and the IDA like really like stepped up and helped fly some people in and put them up. Because our community is large, we have different needs. I wanted to make sure that there were people there who were filmmakers with mental health issues, uh, mobility issues, uh, folks that are deaf. And we got this wonderful group of people in this room, including our allies, I remember Jax DeLuca from the ADA there. Um, and, um, and out of that became 
for Doc. We had this list of people, and I don't remember exactly how the, you know, the this firm came together here for her organization, but, uh, but it did, and we have, um, and so over the last number of years, um, a core group of us founders have built this organization that is now very well known for being the people that you connect with when you want to know more about accessibility or inclusion or diversity. And there really is no DEI without disability. And really pressing this point. So we have about 600 members on our Facebook page. We you know, had members at IFA recently. I mean, all these wonderful things are happening. And the scorecard that Abby mentioned really kind of grew out of really kind of a painful experience that the, one of the founders of the One in Four Coalition, Aaron Brown, went through as a woman with mobility issues. And just, you know, you shouldn't, you should be able to go to a film festival where, you know, it's work. It's not just all parties and pleasure. You're trying to build your career. You're trying to be there for your clients. And her having to try to figure out how to get from point A to point B, or not being allowed by policemen across the street earlier, all these things that you really, you know, so the work of Cassidy Diamond and the, uh, the Film Festival Alliance and a number of people, we have this scorecard. And I encourage people to go to the forward doc website to kind of really look at a lot of different resources. Um, so um, I want to wrap this up by um, saying that what can you do? What can you do? So some of the biggest issues we really have are getting people employed. And this is not like make a wish. This is not like a shelter workshop. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, that are capable and ready to work, to find it very difficult to get on these jobs. Um, often our, uh, and, you know, the initial kind of way to get in is as a PA or some entry level position, where it's expected for you to work 16, 20 hour days. Endurance is not, does not equal value. No. You have to I see this stuff with Elon Musk in Twitter, and it's just like, you, I mean, you screwed yourself already. But in talking to so many people, you know, when I'm working, I'm working hard. And I may not be able to do a 12-hour day, but when I'm working, I'm there. And I bring my talent and my commitment because I know I'm competing with people, and I'm competing to get a job from employers who probably live with a certain amount of um, apprehension about hiring people with disabilities. So what you all could be doing is to be an ally mm -hmm. in regards to looking around and seeing who's on your crew um, and really trying to search people out. We do have a database at Forward Doc. Crewvy is another uh, online website to find crew people, and they have great filters around disability. So there are Folks have ways to do this. I also want to say that make your films with audio descriptions, mm -hmm. with captions, mm -hmm. and also an open caption version. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's always going to be used as an open caption version, but I have to tell you that if you're in a festival and you get them to have an open caption version, the deaf community will come out. Mm -hmm. And they all come out in huge numbers. It's good business. Mm -hmm. And you know, we learned something at Sundance um, when the little caption devices went down in Salt Lake City. And the woman that was doing going to moderate our film was hard of hearing, uh, the QA, and and that was her way to see the film. And she says, Would you want to watch a film looking out of this little box? Mm -hmm. You know, that was there? Of course not. But also by making these assets, you have to get them used. Mm -hmm. And you have to insist that the festivals use them. You know, and so you're advocating for our access so that we can be out in the world and really participating. Um, I think I have a few more really, really, really <laughs> thoughts, and I'm sure the index cards are like right at the foot of my ramp and the parking lot. But um, uh, I just, I encourage you to um, really kind of embrace, access is love. Mm -hmm. 
And access is not just about being disabled. It's allowing people who are marginalized and disadvantaged for so many different reasons to work with us, to in experience our films. And um, that's a commitment I make, not just to the disability community, but to every community that really needs support that's not like me. So thank you. Woo!